Making a modern shoe that's fully biodegradable has been nearly impossible, even for major corporations. Big brands like Adidas have used stuff like ocean plastic to make their sneakers better for the environment. But those, like the 24 billion other pairs we make each year, are really difficult to recycle and will likely end up in a landfill. After six years of trying, this San Diego startup says they've made a shoe that actually completely breaks down. It biodegrades in soil, it biodegrades in compost, it biodegrades in the ocean. And the founders say most competitors who claim to have done the same are greenwashing. We get lots of products that people say biodegrade. We test them in here and it turns out they don't. So why is it so hard to make a biodegradable shoe? And can these products solve plastic pollution or will they make it worse? If an item is truly biodegradable, bacteria and fungi will want to chow down on it until only natural material, water, and carbon dioxide are left. But they don't exactly have tiny mouths to chew it up. Instead, they release enzymes, which break it apart at the molecular level into simpler elements that the microorganisms can absorb and digest. Conventional plastics, made from fossil fuels, take centuries to biodegrade because they're just too new. Most microorganisms haven't yet evolved to break down their long chains of strong bonds. But it is possible to make biodegradable plastics from fossil fuels by engineering the molecules to be easier to break apart. The main challenge for scientists has been making biodegradable plastics that microbes can digest once they're thrown out, but that stay strong and durable while humans are using them. Steve Mayfield and his team of researchers have been putting supposedly biodegradable products to the test for more than four years. Here's one of our little leather samples. So this is from a very famous uh, fashion house in Italy. Oh, we have biodegradable leather. Five months later, it looked like this. It has clearly not biodegraded. In 2020, Steve and his team invented biodegradable foam made with algae, which they turned into flip-flops. But producing a full sneaker requires a lot more than just foam. You look at a shoe, it's actually a surprisingly complex object, right? In fact, your typical sneaker can contain dozens of different materials. It might have a mesh upper made of polyester, faux leather detailing, hard plastic eyelets, an insole made of neoprene, a foam midsole, and a cushy rubber-like outsole made of ethyl vinyl acetate. In other words, many different types of plastic. Making the Blue View shoe meant reinventing sneakers from the sole up down to the smallest detail. The end of the little ties. Quite often those are made with plastic. Now, their shoes are made at commercial scale in Indonesia, in a factory that makes shoes for brands around the globe. The owner, Anthony Salim, has been in the shoe business for 15 years, but he'd never made anything biodegradable before partnering with Blueview. This has been the most innovative and daring project that we have ever been with. The first challenge was making fabric strong enough to support the top of the shoe without using conventional plastics like nylon. You want a shoe that looks like this. You don't want a shoe that looks like that, all collapse. So we had to buy our own knitting machines and then learn how to program them in such a way that the material itself would stand up on its own, right? And that actually took six months, I hate to say it, but that, that took a lot of time and a lot of work. Now they weave together fabric made from hemp and tensile, which is a partially synthetic fabric made from wood pulp. The other part of the design is the knitting process. The style is particularly unique and it's never done before. To provide more stability, they also add a heel counter made of biodegradable polyurethane, a versatile form of plastic found in all kinds of products, like kitchen sponges and the shiny coating on cars. On the stitching line, workers sew the upper to a board made of jute, a plant whose golden fibers are commonly woven into sacks across South Asia. Elsewhere in the plant, workers mix the ingredients to make the foam that will become the sole. That's the trickiest part to make biodegradable because it's specially engineered to be comfortable and durable. Most shoes use polyurethane foam, made by mixing together two types of chemicals, both of which are typically derived from fossil fuels. Steve and his team figured out how to replace one of them with plant oils, like jatropha or castor oil. The team does a quick test pour to check how much the foam rises and how fast it solidifies. Then they prep the molds and begin pouring. To complete the layered sole, they pour white foam on top of the blue treads.
Finally, it's time to glue the two parts together. The glue is imported from Germany and was also tested in San Diego to make sure it biodegrades. It's heat activated, so a lamp warms it up before the two parts are pressed together. The final touch is a decorative strap made of cotton canvas. It's cut, stitched with cotton thread, checked under a light, and tied to the shoe using short laces. The final product uses materials imported from seven different countries. Blueview says it knows its product is biodegradable because the team tests it regularly. So here's our shoe at day zero, right? Here it is at one month, here it is at three months, and here you can see that the upper degrades faster than our polyurethane bottom. We asked Steve and his team to put their shoes to test on camera, alongside six competitor shoes marketed as sustainable. At the lab, they started by taking a before photo of each shoe. We're gonna go ahead and take four images per shoe so we can get as many of these surfaces as possible. The team fills a container with moist compost. This is plant waste from farms, which has already been digested by microorganisms. There's nothing gross going on in here, just a bunch of happy microbes living in their little lives. It's packed with natural bacteria, which give all the samples a better chance of breaking down. The team fills up each shoe and buries it with the mixture, plus more water. We'll take our water and we'll go ahead and we'll simulate a little rain shower for this compost pile, just so that way everything is nice and hydrated. This cabinet keeps it all at about 113 degrees Fahrenheit. And this incubator will keep the temperature consistent with what your average home compost pile would be like. They check on these samples every week. I started reporting on this story in 2023, Blueview and I waited more than a year to see how much the samples degraded in compost. Here's how the results measured up against the brand's claims. Besides Blueview, we tested Allbirds, Orba, Native, Rackle Shoes, Johnny Footwear, and Unless Collective. Three of them claim or heavily imply on their sites that their shoes are fully biodegradable. Two others made more nuanced claims about partial biodegradation of the foam soles only in specific conditions and the others say the shoes are plant-based but don't mention biodegradability. After this test, only three of the seven shoes had clear signs of biodegradation. Here they are at 29 weeks and 59 weeks. Blueview's shoe was by far the most degraded, but it wasn't completely gone. Steve estimates it would take a few more months for that to happen, and prior testing from an outside lab found the foam used for the soles was 90% biodegraded in 219 days. Four of the seven shoes stayed almost completely intact, including one by Johnny Footwear, a $150 sneaker the brand claims is biodegradable. The website also says it comes with an apple seed that would supposedly grow into a tree, encouraging buyers to bury their used shoes in the ground. This is the area where the apple seed should be. And if you look inside the shoe, there is a little flap and there is no seed in that little flap. It's important to note, for this biodegradation comparison, Blueview was testing its own competitors. Some of the brands claim their shoes take three to five years to break down, and we weren't able to run a test that long. So this isn't perfect science. But the results are still revealing in terms of what can happen to shoes marketed as environmentally friendly at the end of their life cycles. Most of them will stick around for a long time. I reached out to all the brands tested for comment on these results. Two got back to me. Allbirds said it prioritizes carbon reduction and that it doesn't claim its shoes are fully biodegradable. Orba said optimizing biodegradation of its shoe requires it to be shredded and put in soil without any toxins. In addition to biodegradation, the shoes were also tested for biocontent. That's the amount made of biological material, so that's plants, animals, fungi, as opposed to fossil fuels. Every shoe tested was marketed as bio or plant-based, mentioning materials like flax, coconut, sugarcane, algae, and other plants. But this is one of the trickiest types of green labeling. Just because something is plant-based doesn't mean it's 100% made of plants, but not every consumer knows that. And it's easy to mix up bio-based and biodegradable. Something bio-based is made of natural material like plants, but you can start with natural material and make something that's not biodegradable. Just look at leather. It's animal skin, but it's typically not biodegradable because of the chemicals used to treat it. Likewise, you can turn fossil fuels into something that is not biodegradable. That's basically all conventional plastics, but you can also turn fossil fuels into biodegradable plastic. 
So something bio-based is not necessarily biodegradable, and something biodegradable is not necessarily bio-based. Confusing, right? That's why it was important to test for bio-content separately. The Blueview team cut off samples of the Seven Shoes soles, the most difficult part to make without fossil fuels, and sent them off to Beta Analytic. It's a third-party lab with no business ties to any of the shoe brands. And the results were all over the map. At the low end, the sole from Johnny Footwear had a biocontent of 0%, meaning it was entirely made of fossil fuels. Rackle Shoes had 1% biocontent, and Natives had 15%. Allbirds and Blueview were somewhere in the middle, with 32 and 49% respectively. And in the top two slots, Orba with 96% and Unless Collective with 100% bio content. The foam sole on Blueview's shoe is about half made of plants and the rest fossil fuels. In 2023, Blueview's parent company got a $5 million grant from the Department of Energy to figure out how to make its foam formula 100% plant-based. Steve says his team's already done that, but they're not making it at a commercial scale yet. Even if Blueview manages to scale, there's still the problem of consumer confusion. Biodegradability is a term which I call it used and abused a lot. It's easy to abuse the biodegradable label for two reasons. One, it's not that well regulated. And two, just about everything will biodegrade eventually if you're willing to wait thousands of years. They will all will biodegrade. It's a question of how fast, how slow, and, and what should be our way of handling it. If a product is marketed as biodegradable, but doesn't specify at what temperature or how long it will take, that's a red flag for consumers. To make things even more confusing, biodegradable and compostable mean different things. Biodegradable is a relatively broad term, while compostable is narrower and has specific legal definitions that vary around the world. In California, the home of Blueview, compostable means that the product totally biodegrades in under 180 days, or about six months, in a home compost bin. In a similar environment, Steve says a Blueview shoe will break down in about 14 months. All this confusion is part of why some experts don't want brands to market products as biodegradable at all, regardless of whether it's true. They also worry that if consumers think something is biodegradable, they might think it's okay to litter. Some say brands selling biodegradable items should have take-back programs to make sure they're properly composted. If you cannot ensure the shoes to be completely biodegraded in an industrial composting system, then you have not really achieved much. Biodegradable products don't just disappear instantly. So if they end up in nature, they can still cause problems as they break down. So fishes can eat it marine life can interact with it. Good, bad, we don't know, but it will interact. All that said, truly biodegradable products still have some environmental advantages. Even before you toss them out, plastic shoes leave behind a trail of microplastics as the soles wear down. Studies published in 2022 found these fragments can leach toxic chemicals into water and hinder plant growth in soil. Other research has found microplastics basically everywhere, in nature, in food, and in our bodies. In 2024, the Blueview team published a peer-reviewed paper showing its product does not create persistent microplastics as it breaks apart and biodegrades. Steve founded Blueview along with Tom Cook, who's worked in the shoe industry for more than two decades. We've got to stop the production of these toxic materials. We have to turn off the tap on Forever Plastics. Blueview is working on licensing its formula to other plastic-heavy industries, too. But we're quickly going to expand into apparel and accessories with coated fabrics. Our primary focus at this point is on selling the materials to other brands. There's no place you can go that isn't covered in plastic. And we just thought, all right, maybe there's not a lot I can do about climate change, but I can do something about that. <laughs> 